The playlist kicks off a new series with a blast from Cole Car Caboose, contemporary weaver Deb Cooter, and Evil Dead the Musical. It's coming right up. Funding for the playlist is provided by the citizens of Minnesota through the Minnesota Arts and Cultural Heritage Fund. Tonight, we're honored to have Cole Car Caboose on the playlist. The seven-piece ska band appeared on the Duluth scene in 2006 with a punk attitude and a big horn sound. Please welcome Cole Car Caboose. <laughs>
Ross, and we'll meet the band and hear more music from Cole Car Caboose later in the show. But right now, we're going to get catch up with Brian Matusek, mm -hmm. and he is the force, the creative force behind <sighs> Rubber Chicken Theater, yes. which is also a pretty energetic force. Mm -hmm. Tell me, Rubber Chicken, what should mm -hmm. I be able to tell just from the name? Just from the name, you can tell you're going to have fun when you go to see a show at Rubber Chicken Theater, whether it's something with a little bit more of a bite to it, a little bit more drama, or a flat-out comedy. It's always going to be a good time. So tell me a little bit of history. How did Rubber Chicken come to be? Well, we started a couple years ago. Um, just wanted to do some more theater around town with my friends and uh, very talented people that live in this community. Um, I grew up in this community, and my wife and I went through a phase where I think a lot of artists do is we thought, we got to go to the cities if we want to make it as artists. And we realized that was silly because we kept coming home to Duluth every opportunity we, we had. And so we said, no, we're going to stay here in Duluth and raise a family. And there's plenty of talented people around here, and that's, uh, that's what we're doing. You divide your time up, you know, between mm -hmm. family obligations mm -hmm. and all of that, but mm -hmm. also between actor, comedian, mm -hmm. writer, mm -hmm. producer. Which of those hats do you prefer? Uh, yeah, they all have a lot of positives about them. I enjoy doing them all, but probably acting is more fun. Just kind of got uh, started doing that at uh, UWS Theaters, where I got my uh, theater degree. My interest and my love for theater was over there and uh, started getting cast and shows. And so I think I probably like that process the most, but I do like all of them. And I, I had the privilege of seeing you in American Buffalo oh, um, this spring, and it was a it was a drama. It, yep. it had a different kind of edge to it than any other of the theater options at the time. Yeah, and that's another reason, that, uh, a selfish reason, to start your own theater company. Is that is a play that I've always wanted to do. Uh, I saw Al Pacino do it in the '80s in New York City when I went uh, for a little time. I was a UMD theater student, and we went to New York City, and we saw Al Pacino in this little tiny off Broadway theater. It was just amazing to see that kind of creative force. Uh, that close, right there in front of you, this close, you know, and that's also the magic of theater. Uh, but so, uh, Rubber Chicken, I said, you know what, let's do American Buffalo now. It came around, and I asked Minden, uh, Minden Hultstrom, very talented, if she would direct it, because I love working with Minden, and she decided to take it on. And, and yeah, we did that uh, early summer, and that was a lot of fun. You've d definitely attracted a very cool group of people who, I think who so. believe Absolutely. in Rubber Chicken and mm -hmm. what you're doing. And you know, the newest is Evil Dead, mm -hmm. the musical. And it debuts this weekend. I'm amazed you guys are here, but I'm really grateful. <laughs> a lot of talented actors who can sing and dance. Yeah. And we have a clip from a recent rehearsal as the cast sharpens up their dance moves. Take a look. Four, now this one's under. The first one is over. The second one is under. Okay? You take something that essentially has words, and in this case, a little music, and then you have to bring it to life. My name is Minden Holtstrom, and I'm the assistant director and the choreographer, and I also play the role of Annie in the play Evil Dead the Musical. And then it's... Tonight we are doing music and choreography for the show, just running the songs and the dances that need a little bit of brush up. And then this one's an under one. I have experienced dancers, and I have people yep, who don't dance very much at all, so you kind of have to find a medium where everybody can do some, some of the same things at the same time without it being too challenging so that they're having fun at the same time and they're not, you know, mad or crabby <laughs> about the dances. I don't like to go to the gym, so I do musicals instead because, I mean, it, when you're seeing us up there dancing, that's the equivalent of running on a treadmill and singing at the same time. I don't expect perfection, but I do expect that the moves are done as correctly as they can be. There's lots of segments where they're doing different things and they need to make sure they know what they're doing so that the two parts work together. And also there's parts where they do everything the same. And so I do want them to be in unison to some point. She's very focused. She's always come in, you know, with all of her notes so she can reference it. I don't know, she's, she's really, really a good choreographer, and it looks great, too. It is definitely very campy, very big. It's based on the old Evil Dead movies, and they were supposed to be a little serious, at least at the beginning, but the musical is not serious at all. <laughs> when they turn into the demons, I give them some time to kind of creatively do their own interpretive dances of what their demon would be like, so that they have time to also be doing what they want as well. And then the, freeze, the freezes are nice. So that, oh, you know those that's really that means really this. So it's not just about memorizing lines and steps. It's about being able to perform. So it is a very funny musical about horror, the horror genre. <laughs> it's fun and it involves people from the community and you put on these shows that are meaningful to you and also we have such a good time doing them. I split my pants. <laughs>
looks like you have a little bit of fun. Just a little bit of fun with this. Yeah, Lynn Holstrom and Nate St. Germain, thank you for coming over tonight, <laughs> the night before the big debut. Minden, how hard is it to choreograph and act in the same production? It gets a little stressful to try to put on both hats, but it's kind of fun at the same time. It looks like a crew that has fun together. And Nate, you were in the original Evil Dead last, the musical, last yep. year. Uh, what can we expect different, uh, new and improved uh, um, for this staging? There's a lot more dancing, which is awesome. <laughs> and they did a really good job with that. Mm -hmm. There's some more special effects. The set is a little bit bigger. Um, we have some new faces. I get to work with some new people that are great. My other best friend, Keith Hersey, and <laughs> Ashley Matheson, and Aaron Blazovic. They're really great. So. And what's it like to be silly with a bunch of people, but also disciplined? Because I think Minden's a taskmaster, and so is <laughs> Brian. You know, I mean, they, they, there is truly a, a script there, right? Yeah, well, it's, you know, you kind of have to balance the art of being serious about what's going on and being diligent and learning your lines and learning your moves, but at the same time having fun with it. Otherwise, I don't think any of us would do theater. Yeah, yeah. it's ridiculously fun. Yeah, we mm -hmm. have tons of fun backstage and on stage and everything, and there's, you know, it has been really great this year. <laughs> so uh, do you think you guys are more interested and more influenced by the horror or the musical and that just weird confluence of both of them is really kind of fun? In this particular show it's definitely more it's about the comedy. Um, the music is a lot of fun and it's surprisingly like good music considering how incredibly cheesy the play <laughs> is but in a good way. Um, <laughs> yeah true. and I grew up watching the movies so I'm all about that. Yeah. <laughs> but 13 big dance numbers. Yeah. 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 It's That's a lot. It's <laughs> a lot. We're tired at the end of the yeah. night. Very <laughs> exhausting. Yeah, and we're covered in bruises all over yeah, the place. Oh, we all and have them. Yeah. I come home smelling like maple syrup constantly and <laughs> from the blood, from the stage blood. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> uh, there, there is a quick um, disclaimer as we show you uh, Evil Dead starts tomorrow night, but the disclaimer is it's not for all audiences, correct? That is true. Right. Okay. There is adult language and content in this, so you don't want to bring small children. Okay. <laughs> but it begins Friday and Saturday, tomorrow night. Um, October 8th through the special midnight performance um, at the venue in Duluth. Thank, have a great run. Thank you. Thanks. Yeah, thanks, thanks for coming over. Thanks for having us. Yeah. Well, our artist profile this week is Debbie Cooter. She handles texture and color with ease. She's an accomplished traditional weaver with an eye for contemporary design. Her studio is just north of Two Harbors. Sometimes I start with color, sometimes I start with texture, and sometimes I start with pattern. You know, sometimes they move together at the same simultaneously, and sometimes one overtakes the other. My name is Debbie Cooter, and I'm a weaver. I moved up to the North Shore 35 years ago. Weaving was really big because it was a Scandinavian heritage here. So, so I just. I, I don't even remember, but I, I was taken. So this is the indigo dye pot. I lately have started to get back into natural dyeing. I did it years ago, and, and one of the things, I spend a lot of time in my studio, so by doing natural dyeing, I get to go out of my studio. When you dye with indigo, you just keep repeating it the dyeing. So see that? It went in as yellow and came out. Oh, that's a nice green. These are all natural dyes. I mean, how could you not like these colors? I mean, I, I just think the colors are gorgeous. I like bright colors and some colors working with them just make me feel so good. Lately, I've been working with a lot of red and it's really feeling good. This is uh, about 450 threads. And this is the warp then that's gonna be wound on to the back of this loom. Often I'm not trying to get the same thing twice, you know, because part of the joy for me is the spontaneity. I just like being surprised. <laughs> this is a blanket warp. 
So I'm pushing different treadles. And as I do that, different sequence of threads are coming up. And that's what's making this pattern. With four harnesses, I can do lots of different patterns. And that's enough interest for me. I work mostly in color and texture. And so four harnesses will fill my lifetime with possibilities. I make blankets, but, but I really like rugs. And it seems perfect because we live in an in a area where, you know, it's cold in the winter and rugs seem perfect to have them on the floor. I, I feel that the rugs that I make are a traditional craft with a contemporary flair. I really found what I like to do. Yeah, I like it all. The art on our set this week comes from Lizard's Art Gallery here in Duluth. It includes Robinson Scott's glasswork and Lee England's paintings. Now Lee's got a show coming up later this month at the University of Wisconsin Superior. So look for details on that and other arts opportunities on our website, theplaylistonline.org. You can check out the arts calendar, watch episodes, and share your ideas for the playlist. We'll be back with Cole Car Caboose right after this. Over here we have Holy Macaroni, which was created by Liz Siebertson, one of our local artists. Um, and she found this toy kid's organ on the side of the road. And I can just picture her saying in her head, Holy Macaroni! That needs to be a pasta-covered piano. <laughs> Hi, I'm Amy Demmer. I'm the director of the Grand Marais Art Colony, and we wanted to show you a little bit of our um, Art Colony member show and sale that's happening right now. Here we have a glass piece that was created by a local glass artist named Jeff Morgan, um, and he he does you know stained glass, but he also has little small little fused glass bowls, which are also in this exhibit. This painting was done by Hazel Belvo, who's actually one of our instructors. She's also a local artist. This painting is called Giverne Poppies, and Hazel actually painted this piece here this summer when she was um, teaching one of her classes. So this show provides our artists with an opportunity to really share what concepts and mediums have been intriguing to them in the past year. This conversation between artist and audience is the most basic reason for art making. It is the human expression of sharing these abstract ideas, which in turn informs the way we look at society and how we then operate in our daily lives. This October, we are so honored to be have the premiere of This is Displacement, a contemporary Native American art show. Native artists consider the relationship between land and identity. Hi, I'm Karen Furlack, and I'm with the Edge Center Gallery in Big Fork, Minnesota. It's very interesting to see the array of ideas about displacement. We are blessed to have the beautiful work of the late Joe Gieschick. His healer will be hanging in our gallery as part of this exhibit. We also have Social Distortion by Jonathan Thunder and the beautiful beadwork on paper by Doug Lyman titled Unita Nation. Well, please welcome back Cole Car Caboose. You guys, thank you for coming in tonight. I so appreciate you being here. And Brian? You get to do the, the big introductions of the band, if you would, please. Uh, starting over there, we have Mr. Trump Hat Patrick on trumpet. We have Alex on trombone, Dave on trumpet, Keith bass guitar. We have Steve back there on drums, Luke on guitar, and I'm Brian. Awesome. <laughs> and how long have you guys been playing together? What was your first gig? 2006, so, but we're pushing five years now. Okay. And how has it evolved? How has it changed? I mean, a different members. personalities, yes? Yeah, we've yeah. gone through a lot of members. Different members. It's edgier now. <laughs> it has. It's kind of got progressively edgier. We went through our, our psychedelic era, and then the <laughs> so It's, it's shown through a lot, of stage, a lot of stage time, too. We, we get a lot closer with each other, and, and the music kind of shows that, too. I think it progresses with that. But 
you told me you guys are working, you know, rehearsing twice a week yep. and playing. I mean, that, that's got to be hard to coordinate with seven people. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> Biggest yep. problem. And how. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So if you guys want to step up, you get to uh, explain to me what ska is or what, 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 how do I know that sound? It's basically like reggae, but in, it's evolved basically from then to now, which is like third wave ska, which is horns, guitars, distorted. It's more punk rock, but meets reggae and all that business. I, guess. <laughs> I don't know. That's the best way I can describe yeah. it. So is it a, um, a particular drum or a chord or rhythm uh, it's progression? It's upstroke or? patterns on the guitar is what kind of distinguishes it that's from where the, other that's places. That's where the name comes from, too. Oh. Mm -hmm. And it's ska, happy. Ska, ska. Yeah, it's very it's very happy. Happy. Yeah. for the most I part. <laughs> 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 um, tell me like about recording. What do you have out there? And where do I find this music? We have an album that we recorded roughly a year ago, I think it came out. Yep. And uh, we're, we have hopes to be in the studio again this winter. I know that we sell our CDs and T-shirts at our shows, and then we also at Electric Fetus, yep. I believe. We have it. Other than that, I don't know if we've hooked up. I know that you can buy stuff on MySpace and Facebook, but I'm not sure if we've got it set up. So. <laughs> find us yeah. on so Facebook. Facebook. Very cool. Yeah, there you go. So there's a job out there for you if you need one. But also your your audience is building. I understand you have people who Always. follow you all over, even in Ely, which yep. is cool to hear too. So thank you even for coming over tonight. <laughs> I so appreciate that. We have one more song from Coal Car Caboose tonight, and we'll be sharing their music in just a second. But um, they'll be playing at the Rex October 29th, a special Halloween show, and we'll be back next week for more of the playlist. In the meantime, go out and support the arts. Take it away, gentlemen. <laughs>
Funding for The Playlist is provided by the citizens of Minnesota through the Minnesota Arts and Cultural Heritage Fund and by viewers like you.